And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Same starting lineup for Florida State in game two with Mudge, Flaherty, Harding, and Leonard right there at the top. Mac, 296 on the season, batting fourth in the lineup. And they will face Millie Thompson, undefeated on the season, 11-0. and And she will try and guide the Tigers uh, on the rebound from just their second loss of the season and their first in league play. Well, Millie Thompson is intense. She is a competitor. She wants the ball. She's going to be dealing it from the left side. She's got very good control, only 10 base on balls given up this year. But she is a lot more pitch to contact. She's going to need to have some clean D. Mudge dropping it down, and Cagle lost her footing trying to field the ball at first, and Mudge is quickly aboard. We saw a couple of defensive miscues in game one for Clemson, and this is just an opportunity for Mudge to beat it out because Valerie Cagle slips. Short turnaround between games. We're going to rule that a base hit. Well, let's see if they try and stick with the short game. The infield uh, freshly watered between games. The rain has held off. Uh, it's been uh, cloudy for the last oh, hour or so here in Clemson with some weather off to the west of us. Temperature has dropped. Flaherty tried to drop it down. Top three in the lineup just had the one hit. They went one for 12 in the first game today, so they're looking to create a little more havoc on the bases. Mudge goes. The throw out into center field, and they've got a shot at her at third base. The throw in, and she is out. Clark to Davenport. And that is just really good defense by Clemson in a situation where they needed it. So this throw is going to go down. It gets past Logaleo. But look at where Mackenzie Clark is. Perfect position on the backup. And we always talk about it. It's ball, bag, backup. You've got to be doing something. Everybody's involved in the play. She picks it up, fires it to Davenport, and gets Mudge out at third. That's a big first step. out. I think what Florida State is is wondering, well, first, was there interference with Mudge at second base, and then did she slide under the tag at third? Travis Wilson, the assistant coach, asking some clarification. Significant here early on. Flaherty, by the way, I, well, she's still got bat in her hand. The scoreboard says two outs. And is John Rittman wondering if the runner left the base early at first? So they, uh, they will instigate a review here. Looked like a situation where the umpires, Michelle, went to ask John Rittman what he wanted to do with the outcome of that play. Which typically means that's a delayed dead ball with the runner leaving yes. early. And, 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 and the reason that rule was changed is so that if the batter puts the ball in play and it's a potential double play, the defense gets to choose the double play versus the leaving early. Flaherty has since put her bat down and gone back to the dugout. She looks like she's out right there, tagged out. Yeah. Now they're probably wondering, is, is she 
This is, is what this the deep? umpires, by the way, are asking to look at. So it's not a situation at first base. It is this play at third. Right. And so with the foot in that position, did Davenport, is it defensive obstruction? Is it DO, defensive obstruction? Have to give the runner a lane to the bag. That looks like contact right there on the knee yeah. with the glove. Strike him out, throw him out at third, I guess, not at second. That's another unique one we don't see every day. <laughs> Strike him out, throw him out at third. <laughs> <laughs> so after the delay, Millie Thompson will go back to work. Here's Kaylee Harding. Harding two-time All-ACC has uh, led the team at RBI the last two years. Changeup just missed. Thompson has that very good changeup. Can throw a curve ball, drop ball. Likes to live in that lower half of the zone. Out of Bedford, Virginia, the junior lefty. Induces the fly ball here. Mackenzie Clark under it. Side retired. Clemson picking up the bats when we come back. Here's a look at the starting lineup for the Clemson Tigers with Mackenzie Clark in the leadoff spot. And then Maddie Moore right behind her, 312 on the season, seven home runs, 21 runs batted in with Valerie Cagle, the All American, in the three spot. Looking to put up some numbers after they got shut out in the first game today. Kat Sandercock, one of three pitchers, and Kat got the save earlier. And now gets the start here for game two. Yeah, Sandercock, most experienced on this team. She's great in big moments. That's why they brought her in late in the game through just 27 pitches to save game one. So they're going to give her the start here. Just nine base on balls on the year. She controls the zone. Good rise ball, drop ball. You got to look north and south. But she also has a very good changeup. Just hits all quadrants. Win in this game means they would take the series. Game three scheduled for tomorrow night. and would put them in a better position to control their destiny in the ACC race. These two now even in the loss column with one defeat apiece. Florida State sch uh, schedule, by the way, holy cow. They are at Duke, at Clemson, at Virginia Tech. So they are on the road against all three of the other top contenders. Yeah. It bodes well. I mean, you think about also Lonnie Alameda, she scheduled Oklahoma State, went to Oklahoma State this year, and Oklahoma. They have 20 ranked games, and 19 of those 20 are away. Also, Louisville having a terrific start to the ACC season, another team near the top of the standings. Clark follows that one off. Sandercock, uh, meanwhile, in ACC play is 5-0, and oh, just one earned run through her 27 innings of work. She went 2-0 and oh in that Duke series, and she threw a no-hitter in the Syracuse series. Waits on the off-speed. Muffley stays down on it, but... So that's the second time early on an infielder has had a little trouble and this time it's Muffley. 
Jalen Muffley's going to field this ball, but if you look at where her glove is, it's a little bit deep. Look at where it's down between her feet. Took kind of a funny hop toward the end and gloved it up, but just then couldn't get it out of her glove. And I think that's a great decision for the no throw. Sometimes you try to force it, you overthrow, and now it's a two-bag error. Single for Clark, so here's Moore. This is the group that usually gets it started for Clemson. They were responsible for all four of their runs in the win last night here against Furman. The top three of Clark, Moore, and Cagle. With the threesome only had one hit in game one today, they went one for eight. Muffley could be two. Over to Flaherty for one. And they get the lead runner. Good job by Muffley to get this ball over to Flaherty. A little bit of a jam job and really good turn, but Maddie Moore going to run hard to get down that line. Especially knowing when you're in the two spot from that right side, you got to haul it to get down there. Make sure you don't get doubled up. One out base runner, and here comes Cagle. Four eighty seven the batting average. Leonard over to second for one. Two down, so a couple of plays to get the lead runners. Well, Maddie Moore confused on that. She saw that ball up, thought it was a line drive and was caught, so she pulled up thinking that she was going to get doubled off. So you can see this ball. You can see all of a sudden she's looking. She doesn't know where it's at. A little bit of traffic on the base pass. Get the lead runner. Okay, with the fielder's choice. Two down, and it's Caroline Jacobson. Kegel on the move, and the tag applied up top for the third out. Good throw by Edenfield, and that'll take care of business. Scoreless through one. You know, people may say that I'm the ace, people may say she's the ace, but I always say it's 1A, 1B. Like, we're both right there, and we bring something completely different, and it, you know, complements each other so well. Well, it's been a terrific tandem so far with Valerie Cagle and Millie Thompson. Aces uh, 1A and 1B. Thompson's unbeaten so far on the season, 11 and 0. Oh, they're fun to watch together. They go about things a little bit differently. Mac Leonard down the right field line, and Jacobson is there, one down. Nagel took the loss in the game earlier today, so she's now 18 and two on the season. Well, and I, th I think the other aspect that Clemson needs to clean up the defense a little bit as of late, they've yes. been a little sloppy in the field. Yeah. And you know, that happens to teams at times. It's just gotta, you know, kind of slow things down, get back in the rhythm. This is a very good defensive team. But that's what pressure does, you know, starting to get in the pressure cooker, the big games now. They have wins over Northwestern and Georgia and Ohio State. The lone loss prior to today was to Tennessee. So this is the first big test of a th in a three-game series against a top 10 foe for the pitching staff that had the number one ERA in the country coming into the weekend. Two down as Moore takes care of it. Yeah, and that's to your point, Beth. You know, they had the top ERA coming in, and so now they're going to start facing hitters that have maybe faced really good arms throughout the season. May not be as fooled by you know, some of the off speed, some of the, the things they've been throwing, and, and need to really have that defense behind them. This is Janai Kerr. Had a hit and an RBI in the opener today. Laces that one out to right center to base hit.
Walker wins this lefty-lefty battle. It's a pitch low and inside. She goes down and gets it, just drives it over Maddie Moore's head, puts it on the green. Nice piece of hitting. So a two-out base runner for Michaela Edenfield, who tore it up in the first game today. Two for three with a three-run home run and five runs batted in. She also had a two-run double. This is a Florida State team that has seen some good left-handed pitches already this year. Kelly Maxwell out of Oklahoma State. Curd, Cassidy Curd, the, the good freshman from Duke. Lauren Shaw from UCLA. Kerr on the run. Safe at second. And a stolen base for Janai. Florida State so good at just applying pressure. Good jump, sneaks a peek. Current out eight for eight on the year. Edenfield's got an RBI opportunity. Good off speed pitch there from Thompson. Um, this is where Edenfield's been so good. She's hitting over 300 in her last eight games. So you look at her stat sheet and she's overall hitting 225 range, but getting hot. Right time of year for that. Absolutely. And when Edna Field, well, actually, she, you know, she raised her, because she went two for three last game, she raised her batting average up to 243. But when she gets hot, she also gets hot with power. The double showed up, the home run, and the home run was her seventh of the year. And that's what Florida State need, needs, you know, those big hits. Kerr will take third base, no throw. And Kerr, that's just stealing on the changeup. That's really good recognition of the pitch. Taking that additional 60 feet. You can see she reads changeup, and as soon as she reads changeup, she doesn't do anything but put the hammer down and accelerate into third. 47 miles an hour on the changeup to get Edenfield, and Kerr stranded a third. Millie Thompson with the changeup. Look at that Mickey Mouse changeup. Gets the strikeout to get out of the jam. Second game of our doubleheader. Florida State won the opener today, 7 0. Just a great environment. Come watch a great sport. Spectacular. Yeah. Did it right. Thompson starting out the program, building a first rate facility. 4, 5, and 6 do up. Caroline Jacobson to face Kat Sandercock. Two-time second-team All-American is Kat. Jacobson, the grad transfer from Duke. So they've got three grad transfers in the lineup. All have filled key roles for John Rittman's club so far this year. We've seen a lot of the top teams, you know, pick up key players through the portal and kind of mm -hmm. plug in the spots that maybe they graduated out, injuries. Jacob Jacobson, she's been outstanding. She has just five strikeouts on the year, a swing and miss rate of just 4.7%. One of the best in the game. And that goes along with her nine home runs. So mm. she hits for power as well as having a really good barrel control. Drift on a play into the bullpen. It's a reunion of sorts, by the way, for John Rittman and one of his former assistants out at Stanford, Lonnie Alameda. There she is calling the pitches there in the dugout. Now in her 15th year at Florida State, but back in the late 90s, early 2000s, they were together on the farm. Tremendous success with the Cardinal. Back onto the roof of the press box here. Yeah, it's always interesting when you look at coaching staffs and, and coaches that are coaching against each other, the coach with each other. 
trade secrets, you know, <laughs> the things you know about each other, tendencies. Right back up the middle base hit, Jacobson. Jacobson just hits so well on that four hole. She protects Valerie Cagle. She's got that great eye and ability to barrel up a ball, does not swing and miss much. And that's one thing that Clemson needed as a leadoff base runner and now trying to advance her. So they did it in the first with a leadoff hit. Now in the second, another leadoff hit. They left six on base in the first game today. Shut out. Well, I'm getting to Kat Sandercock on a one-two pitch. You know, that's a, something that doesn't happen very often with her experience. She typically does not give up a lot of hits with, with two strikes when she's ahead. Margaleo drops down the bunt and with his hitter in the batter's box. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think Lonnie's going to ask to see if that was in or out of the box. Yeah. Good call by the umpires. Yeah. Jose Chaparro behind the plate. Chris Neighbors at first. Craig Hyde at third. Go to the count to Logaleo. Popped her up. Muffley back on the grass behind the bag. One down. Abby Vieira. Game one, just Clemson had a hard time passing the bat. Really, no productive outs. They weren't able to back up hit to hit, or at least getting on base. And it's tough to score runs, especially off a pitcher like Kat Sandercock, who's she's not going to walk a lot of hitters. You know, the defense is stellar behind her. You're going to have to earn your way on. And if 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 you're hit, getting a hit every third or fourth batter, it's, it's tough to go station to station. And a lot of jam jobs, a lot of pitches on the inner half, and, and uh, that has to do with Lonnie Alameda. So as good as Kat Sandercock is, Lonnie Alameda is one of the best pitch callers in the game. So you're combating your talent as the ball gets passed around and kept. You get to keep him here at Clemson. Is he okay? Did he faint when somebody tried to give him the ball? I think he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice back. moment for that youngster. Yeah. And so Lonnie, you know, spends a lot of time looking at the data, looking at the analytics, and the matchups. Vieira to Harding, over to Flaherty for one. First base, Leonard, not in time, but again, they get the lead runner, two down. And always well positioned, so Pitching with the defense instead of against the defense. Kaylee Harding perfectly set up to field this ground ball. She's near the line. It's an outside pitch exactly where you want it on the high hop. Flaherty on time at second and a really good turn. Good job by Vieira to get down the baseline, make sure she's not doubled up. Two down for Ariel Oda.
A one pitch. One one. It's a Florida State team that won the ACC tournament a year ago. They were the preseason favorites this year. Six of their eight starters are back. The significant loss, Sid Sherrill, their star third baseman for the last five years. Well, it's always interesting when you know, these good programs, you, you graduate out as Sid Sherrill, and you're like, how are you going to replace her? And somehow <laughs> they do. Mm -hmm. Kaylee Harding's done a terrific job yeah. taking over at third base. This is a, a situation really as well that Clemson needs to work on. Game one, 0 for 7 with two outs. And again, it's that situational hitting, runners in scoring position, two outs, runners on. Are you moving runners, productive outs, all those little things that they have to be on point in order to beat a team like Florida State. With or without Sid Cheryl. <laughs> One, two pitch. Flaherty waits on it, fires to first. Side retired. Base hit, but one left stranded, scoreless, through two. Edenfield, five RBI on the day. And uh, they had three pitchers combined for the shutout, the two hits. Yeah, it's a Florida State team that just is very well coached. They do it all well. They've got great pitching, really good defense behind those pitchers. And then the offense has been on point as of late, especially getting the power game going. Katie Dack, it's 8-9 and then the top to face Millie Thompson. Yeah, and how about Katie Dack hitting in the eight hole and she's your leading home yeah. run hitter? <laughs> it's like, okay. Try something different. That's right. Nine on the year for Katie. Her first season in Tallahassee. All SEC performer at Texas A&M last year, and she muscles that one out into center. Lead off a board for the second time in three innings for FSU. Dak has just been seeing the ball well. It's an inside pitch, and she just barrels it up, gets enough of it, finishes her swing, gets it out on the green. Now the number nine hitter, Josie Muffley. Lays down the sacrifice. Thompson spins, fires to first. One down, but it advances Dak to second. And now the top of the order coming back. Muffley, good job, great back control, puts it right down to Millie. Millie spins around. I think she might have had an opportunity to try to get Dak mm -hmm. at second, chooses not to get the lead runner. Kelly Mudge singled in the first to lead off the ball game. Another good change up in for a strike. That sacrifice, by the way, the sixth of the season for Muffley. She's good at it. It's not, not a lost start yet in our game. The power <laughs> game has showed up. You don't see as many sacrifices. Off the glove of Kegel and the scoop in time to get the out. Two down as Dak advances to third. That's a really good recovery by Valerie Cagle. That ball squirts away from her, but good conversation and communication between Maddie Moore and Cagle. So the ball goes off of Cagle's glove. She sees that it's going to get to Moore in time. She retreats to the bag and a good stretch and the catch just in time to get the big out. So here's Devin Flaherty with the runner on third. 
Takes a look at a strike. She's looking for her first hit of the series. And so back to our conversation on productive outs, even in game one, you know, Florida State was six for 13 in advancing opportunities. Clemson was just two for 12, so it's another inning right here. A couple of productive outs, no base hits, but we've got a runner at third. One, two from Thompson. Spins the change and Flaherty fights it off. Twelve runs batted in on the season for Devin. Curve ball in the outer half. It's going out. It's going down. With Dak down at third. Full count. that change up in any situation. If that pitch is just a little bit lower and not in the eyes, it's so tough to identify. Eighth pitch of the at-bat coming up, and Vieira, a quick word with Millie. <laughs> Chop to short. Lagaleo's got to hurry, not in time, and a run scores. The infield single to drive in a run for Flaherty. And that's why productive outs are so important. Dak moves around the bases on a sacrifice, a ground out to the right side, and now a high hopper infield hit, putting the pressure on the defense. This is just a high hopper that Logaleo has to go get, doesn't go get it quick enough. And because Flaherty runs so well, Florida State is going to get up on the board, scoring Dak on that infield hit by Devin Flaherty. And Flaherty not likely to stay there long. She's the leading base stealer in the ACC. I think she's shaking her head. She knew she had a chance to run right there. Yeah. Another one in the dirt, and this time she will go. So she gets into scoring position. 22nd stolen base of the year in 23 attempts. Just great reads. Harding with the swing and the miss. The throw down, diving back in is Flirty. Even aggressive leads out of second, right? Yeah. That, that's what's so important. That ball gets anywhere. It gets behind, you're going to advance. If it's a dump out onto the green, you're going to score. But you've got to be aggressive, and that's what Florida State plays. Official score is trying to change it to a wild pitch now and take the stolen base away. It would have been nine stolen bases in 
10 innings so far on the day for Florida State. Yeah. And the fourth of the game already. Harding flares that out to right, Jacobson under it. But a run does come in, Flaherty the RBI single. And Florida State jumps on top. Lonnie Alameda on the headset on the other side. one nothing. Florida State with the lead. Lonnie, I know back in the good old days we used to play a lot of double headers, but uh, a bit out of the ordinary nowadays. So what do you do with your team after a nice 7-0 win to get them ready for game two tonight? Well, you slurp down some food as fast as you can, and then you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good old-fashioned doubleheader you know, mindset. So I think we have, what, like 45 minutes? But, yeah, get some food and go. And, Coach, uh, you, you start uh, Kat Sandercock here in game two. She finishes game one. W was that kind of the plan all along, or did it just end up that way? Um, it kind of ended up that way, yeah. I um, mean, you know, I didn't think it was right to let her sit and see if we can close this one out. So we're going to go as long as we can here. I think she did a great job. It was 30-some-odd uh, pitches, I think, in the, to close the second one, so, or the first one. So see if we can get here. Yeah. 27 pitches to be in there. There you go. I'm close to 30. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Lana. Thanks, That's Coach. a picture right there. Somebody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> national champions in 2018, the national runners-up, 2021. Had a pair of trips to the Champ Series in uh, five years. Stunned last year in the regionals at home. They were the two seed in the tournament. So, you know, this group coming back is Hong great for a return to Oklahoma City, which may include a, another ACC championship. Flaherty stays down on that, one down. It's the bottom of the order here, eight, nine, and then one. They got some good men's lacrosse coming your way here on ACC Network and, of course, on the ESPN app. Number three, Virginia. Number nine, North Carolina, six Eastern. Tomorrow night right here on ACC Network. Weather permitting, we will have game three of this series tomorrow night on ESPN 2. First pitch set for seven Eastern. If you were here with us tonight, you would feel the moisture in the air now, Smitty, that uh, that front is moving closer. My, my curl factor <laughs> is, my hair is expanding. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> Feels yeah. like a three-man booth tonight. Me, Smitty, and Smitty's mane. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it stays away just long enough to, to get this game in. Yeah. And then hopefully we'll have more softball tomorrow. This is one of the better uh, regular season Head-to-head -head matchups on the slate this year. Both in the top 10. And one of the more remarkable stats you'll come across. So Florida State's been so good for so long in the Atlantic Coast Conference. You gotta go back 12 years the last time they were the lower ranked team in an ACC game, 2011. And they come in here, number six in the nation, Clemson number four. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. The consistency that Lonnie Alameda has really instilled in this program. We've always had good pitching staffs. This may be the biggest and the most utilized with seven different arms used this season, six different starting pitchers. And there's a great article by Graham Hayes on D1 Softball. Mm -hmm. He's talking about just that, how Lonnie Alameda has had to learn like how to use her pitches and how to bring them out of the pen and who's strong starting and relieving. But she doesn't want any of them to be comfortable. No, get, get them uncomfortable so that they're more comfortable in May and in early June. Well, in case in point, she does that with her starter in game one, Michaela Reed, the yeah. freshman, had not started a game. <laughs> and she starts her in game one yeah. at Clemson. You know it's going to be a sold-out crowd. Put her in the pressure cooker. She has embraced uh, the analytics, and it's really a matter of all the information that's out there now, finding what's most useful for your team and then finding what they can digest, mm -hmm. right? 
We'll give them a little bit now, maybe a little bit later. You don't want to overwhelm them. Their heads yep. are already filled with their academics and their social lives and all the other things the outside world is throwing at them. Well, one of the other things that Lonnie Alameda's done really well in the past is that she has redshirted some of her pitchers. Mm -hmm. So Megan King was one of them that, you know, redshirt that freshman year, give them another year to really develop under Lonnie Alameda, uh, you know, learn so much. And on the backside of your career, it makes such a big difference. Hey, you know, I, one of the things I loved about the whole Megan King situation, she went to the World Series the first time and failed. Yeah. Second time, she had one of the best World Series in the history of the sport in guiding them to the national championship in 2018. Yeah, one of the lowest DRAs in history. Yeah. It's okay to fall down. Just got to get back up. That's right. All a part of the college experience. Three two count here to Reedy Davenport. Ninth pitch of this AB. They're uh, making Cat Sandercock throw a lot of pitches here early on. And Cat gets the K. Um, this is why Cat Sandercock is just so strong, is that you you scout her and you see a lot of down, a lot of off speed, but she can also do this. She can also come upstairs with a quality pitch, a rise ball. When you're looking down, she changes that eye level, and she also works really good effective velocity. That's her first strikeout, and has now gone one time through the lineup, so back to the top on Mackenzie Clark. Mackenzie singled her first time out. Well, and it is interesting, when you look at Kat Sandercock, a lot of people think, well, power pitcher she is, but she is still more pitch to contact. She gets just 22% of her outs via the strikeout, mm -hmm. which for a successful pitcher like Sandercock, a lot of times you think a little bit more, 30, 40% of the, the case, or at least one an inning, right? 30% yep. would be one an inning. Kat, by the way, 91 career wins. One win away from tying Jessica Burroughs for fourth all time. And then the 100 win club is within reach. That would be Lacey Waldrop, Megan King, Leslie Malarich. 109, 108, 107, the all time wins leaders. One one to Clark, one and two. She's got five ground outs, one fly out, and the strikeout. Comes in with a single in each of the first two innings tonight. Yeah, and then just unable to move them. Speed pitch it gets away from Sander Cock a little bit. A little smile before she collects herself. <laughs> <laughs> she knew you could tell by her body language. Yeah. She was like, What was that? <laughs> Mudge coming on, and that will drop in front of her and scoot by her. Extra bases for Clark. And the stand-up double. And the tying run now in scoring position with two outs. And that's exactly what Clemson needed. They needed a break. They needed a ball to, to drop down. And this one, because of where Mudge is playing, respecting the power of Mackenzie Clark, She's back deep and tries great effort to try to get that, but it gets past her. You know, two rules of thought, you know, do you let that drop in front of you and you, you keep Clark to a single with two outs or do you go for it, try to make the diving catch, it gets past you, it's a double. Maddie Moore reached out a fielder's choice back in the first. Looking for her first hit of the series. 
with Valerie Cagle on deck. There's Maddie Spray from our friends at 643 Charts. That's for Powers. Left center. This is a very deep Clemson team. They haven't really showed it today against this Florida State pitching staff, but every hitter in this lineup over 300, every hitter in this lineup has a home run. Yeah, they come in top five batting average in the country, top 10 scoring. With Cagle hoping she'll get a shot at it. There you go, batting average, double, slug, OB, walks. And top five nationally. Swing and a miss, got her at the rise. And the base runner stranded at second. John Ritten will chat with us when we come back. Back here at Clemson, one nothing Knowles over the Tigers. John Rittman now with us on the headset. John, you guys have been close every inning. What's the message to your hitters right now to try and break through? Really just stay aggressive in the strike zone. You know, we, um, we've we had some opportunities. We just got to be patient at the plate and get our pitch. And when we do, we got to put a good swing on it. You know, it's pretty simple. Um, I mean, they're, they're a very good pitching staff, obviously, and they, they make you work. And we just got to capitalize on those uh, opportunities, Beth. And Coach, how important is Millie Thompson's uh, energy? I mean, just her demeanor on this in, in the circle. It's huge, you know. Um, Millie's such a fierce competitor, and it, it brings out the best in our team. And you know, you know, you're going to get her A game every time she steps in that <laughs> circle. And she's able to turn it on and off. You know, she can come in the dugout and clown around and get people loose, and then go out there and want to rip your heart out. So <laughs> she's just a fierce competitor. We love her, and glad she's on our side. Absolutely. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Coach. appreciate it. She must have heard Coach just blew him a kiss. <laughs> Thanks for the compliments. <laughs> and she is indeed ready to go. Yeah. Four hits for Florida State. And the one run across in the last inning. And now she'll see four, five, and six. Here's Mac Leonard. for the uh, Florida State Seminoles. Trying to sweep a double header here on the road, their very first trip to Clemson. I mean, they, they, they are putting together an awfully good resume. They've got wins over Oklahoma State, Arizona, Arkansas, Louisiana. Losses to Oklahoma State, OU, Alabama, UCLA, they still have a non-conference with Florida to come. They still have Virginia Tech to close out the regular season. Yeah, I mean, so they'll be able to put that resume yeah. up against anybody on Selection Sunday. Absolutely, absolutely. And a lot of those games on the road. This instrumental, not only for your ACC championship chase, but also for that selection committee. If you're in the same area as Clemson on the RPI, which they are right now, you want to be able to have the head-to-head. -head. They've already got a head-to-head -head with Duke as Leonard wraps one back up the middle. Lead off on board here for the Knowles. Now the Knowles have been very good at getting that leadoff runner on. Done that in three of the four innings. He's taking a pitch again, going the opposite way. Here's Hallie Waycaser, grounded out in the second. Oh yeah, and to your point, Beth, I mean, the committee looks at all that stuff. I mean, they're, they're, they're doing the eye test, you know, they're watching these games and seeing how everybody matches up and who's a six, who's a seven, who's an eight. That eight, nine position. Or how about that 16, 17 position? Case or base hit, so that's back to back off of Thompson. Florida State's been very good at successive, successful at bats. Pitch is just going to drive out into the green. 
That's the thing about Thompson is that, you know, she's given up singles, you know, and Florida State's taking them. They're not trying to do too much with Thompson's pitches, so just barreling them up. Jenai Kerr, first pitch swinging, and that will drop in for a base hit. Leonard being waved around after it's mishandled out in center field by Clark. They were going to hold Leonard at third, and then once the bobble happened, bang, they center. And it's 2 nothing. Well, on aggressive here in this inning, swinging at the first couple pitches, and you can just see that Kerr is going to drop that onto the green. A little bit of a bobble by Clark, and that's all it takes. Leonard getting coached around the corner, telling her to run fast by... Travis Wilson in the third base box. So it's second run of the game up on the board. Three consecutive hits now here in the fourth. And for Janai Kerr, that's uh, an RBI in each of the games today. Florida State's coming out swinging early, so the, yep. the base hit by Leonard, she gets on a 3-1 count, but Wade Kaser and Kerr, both of them, first or second pitch swinging, and sometimes, you know, just <laughs> not wanting to deal with that nasty changeup that Millie Thompson has. You see something good early in the count, you just go get it. One, two to Edenfield. Plenty of power. Um, a lot of doubles. Yeah. Uh, they are very good. One of the best in the country at doubles. Seen a handful of those today. Dak leads the way in slug. 69 doubles on the season. Excuse me, that's Clemson. Yeah, 69 doubles for Florida. <laughs> They'll get the runner at second. So runners on the corners here with one out. Defense getting the outs for Millie. Pitch up in the zone that gets driven down. Good job by Maddie Moore, making sure she's on time at second. Here's Katie Dack, singled and scored in the third. in front of home plate. Three hits in the inning, including the RBI single for Jani Kerr. And they double up the advantage. Good frame by Vieira. And if you look back at, as you were mentioning, Beth, you know, game one, it really was all the damage was Basically four through eight, four through seven. You know, big kill of Edenfield in that seven hole with those five RBIs, but it's not been the top of the lineup. It's been the middle pack. Oh, get out onto the grass. Looking for a youngster, looking for a youngster. There we go. <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> Coach Rittman, you know, a lot of universities, you got to give the ball back. Yes. Here you go. Souvenir. He decided here we want the fans to enjoy that experience of getting a ball. I don't know who pays for the extra softball. Is that on John's tab? It probably is. Well yep. done. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder what that number is. How many, how many softballs into the crowd uh, on any given day? That's one I'm sure uh, maybe... Uh, Twitter will help us out on that one. Yeah, that's the average. <laughs> Dak into the netting. Waycaser and Edenfield await.
This is high. And that's a changeup, and she needs that pitch to be in for a strike right now. She's a little bit over the top of it, leaning forward, and so when she's releasing it, it's up in the zone. It's important to try to keep your core tall and get that hand extended, keep it lower in the zone. Three and two. And Dak walks to load him up. Okay, the ACC spring football season gets underway Saturday. It's the NC State spring game from Carter Finley Stadium. Chance to maybe check out Brennan Armstrong, the big transfer from Virginia at quarterback. Coverage begins at 1 Eastern on ACC Network Extra. The complete spring football schedule can be accessed by going to theacc.com slash spring football. Reagan Spencer is warming up in the bullpen if Thompson cannot work out of this jam. Three singles to start the inning. Fielder's choice and a walk and still just the one out. And now you're dealing with the number nine hitter and then back to the top of the order. Well, she was in control of Dak and her last three pitches all change-ups all elevated. Already today, Florida State, with the win earlier, snapped Clemson's 23-game win streak, their 29-game home win streak, and now trying to hand Millie Thompson her first loss of the season. Millie 11-0 coming in. Bases loaded for the Knowles, and here's Muffley. The redshirt senior from Portage, Michigan. Here's a look at your base runners. Waycaser, Edenfield, and Dak. Mac Leonard has already scored on the Kerr RBI single. Muffley goes the opposite way. Jacobson should be deep enough. The tag, Waycaser to the plate, and the throw is cut off, and it's 3-0. Sack fly from Muffley. Who had a sack bunt earlier to lead to a run. Muffley going the opposite way. Good job by Waycaser to make sure that she's back and on her way after the catch is made. So. John Rittman, is he asking if the runner touched home plate? So they appeal, and uh, home plate umpire Jose Shaparo says all is good. Got it with her hands, sliding by. So now runners on the corners, two outs, back to the top, and here's Mudge. Singled with a bunt earlier in the game. Good snare by Davenport at third. Saved a run there, but two more in and a 3-0 FSU lead. Davenport playing the hot spot, grabs the ground out. Clemson picking up the bats. Game two of the doubleheader, Florida State took the opener and they have the lead here in game two as well. You see the offensive improvements, big leap forward for the Clemson Tigers. Uh, that's a big reason why they're off to the 37 and two record thus far. Uh, but it's been a different story today, Smitty. Yeah. Uh, in the two games, uh, let's see, through 10 innings, they are five for 35. 
Yeah, they, against Florida State pitching. Yeah, yeah. And you just can tell the situational hitting again has really been an issue. You know, and when you go back and you look, it's like how many hits do we get with two outs, with runners on, with runners in scoring position, advancing opportunities. All those numbers are so important. And you have to be cognizant when you're in those situations as an offense. Like, hey, we got runners on, we got to advance them. Bethany Keene is uh, on for Mac Leonard at first base. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, we saw that with, with Florida State. I mean, how important it is with the, with the advancing runners. That's how yeah. they scored their first run on an infield hit because they simply had two productive outs. Cagle jacks one, back it goes and gone. Solo home run, Valerie Cagle. Well, and maybe that's exactly what Clemson needed just to bust things open. 14th home run of the year for Valerie Cagle. That solo shot and just the fifth home run of the year that Kat Sandercock has given up. And watch the fan uh, take one for the team. He may have lost a finger on this one. Trying to catch the home run ball out on the berm. Ouch. Oh, so close. <laughs> That's a stinger. Stinger. And finally, some smiles for the Tigers after they had been shut out for 10 innings today. That's an 0-1 pitch. He just gets hammered. Drifting into foul territory, and Waycaser has it one down. Boy, big for their psyche, if nothing mm. else. They, they had, in their uh, four years of playing softball here at Clemson, they had never been shut out in back-to-back -back games. Well, and and after the 7-0 loss earlier. Yeah, and, and still looking for their first win against Florida State. Logaleo. It's always different when teams come into your own house, right? You gotta defend it. Yeah. Well, it's still so much history, right, for Florida State. They've been around a long time, back to the days of Dr. Joanne Graff, success even before the days of the NCAA, late 70s, early 80s, they were winning national championships. And then a program here at Clemson that's only a handful of years old, but just amazing support from the community here. Always a big deal when the top dogs come to town and the preseason favorites are the team to beat again in the ACC. O2 pitch. I think that's what Lonnie Alameda has done just so well is that she's just year in and year out built a very consistent, very, very consistent team. And, you know, we've seen that John Rittman here at Clemson. I mean, both these clubs, that's why, the, you know, the cream rises to the top. These are two programs that year in and year out, as long as Clemson is, you know they're going to be good. Well, that's brought the crowd to life as well. Finally, some action for the home team. The solo home run for Valerie Cagle. Good glove work at third, and then the cannon over to first, two down. Hey, our next All Access, the ACC Life premieres on Monday. Take a closer look at pit wrestling, Georgia Tech men's golf, 
and Virginia Tech softball. You'll get unprecedented access into the lives of the student athletes, coaches, staff, parents, and fans. All access the ACC Life, 7 Eastern, right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app Monday night. Oh, that guy's reading about his, uh, his attempted catch out there on social media. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got photos of you. Always bring your glove to the ballpark, yep. as Beth Mullins says. Looks like he's okay. Looks like he's shaking it off. <laughs> Tried to one hand. Is, uh, is he left-handed? That was the other question I had. Yeah. He, he reached up with the left no, to go for it. He's wearing the, the watch on the... That's right, and the ring's on the left, so I think he's right-handed. <laughs> He's a social media darling now. Vieira and oh, what a play by Flaherty to go back and get it on the grass. Over the shoulder to make the grab. Side retired. But Cagle did this to get on the board. Oh, Valerie Cagle going down and getting the ball. Her 14th home run of the year. She gets Clemson on the board with that big blast. Check out today's game summary with Florida State leading Clemson three to one. Kat Sandercock, four innings of work. Janai Curse, two for two. She's driven in a run in both games today. And for Clemson, Valerie Cagle with the solo home run just a few moments ago. So after the Knowles took the opener seven zip, they have the three one lead as well here in game two, trying to win the series before we even get to game three tomorrow night. Pitching change for the Tigers here to open up the top of the fifth. It's Brooke McCubbin, who was one out away from a no-hitter last night here against Furman. Coming on in relief. Yeah, she was really strong last night. She could spin the ball very well. Super athletic in the circle, but the key is going to be that off-speed. She can attack every zone, and when that off-speed is on, she is tough to hit. So Devin Flair, you just made the terrific play defensively, launches one to center field, back to the track it goes, and Clark has room, one down. Two, three, four here in the batting order. And here's Kaylee Harding. Besides, uh, Smitty, the word is out. Swing at those first pitches. <laughs> they are feasting. I like those pitchers playing with you, especially with the good off speeds. Do they know something about the weather report that we don't? Uh, <laughs> exactly. Keep swinging. Randy's right moving in. Harding was last year's ACC Tournament MVP. Chops that one to second. Two down. McCubbin can roll a lot of ground balls and that defense behind her. Good job by Moore going up the middle. Getting that back foot down, making a strong throw over to Cagle. Mac Leonard stays in the batting order after getting lifted at first base. She's one for two, singled and scored in the fourth. Knowles got a run in the third. RBI single for Flaherty, and then two more in the fourth. Kerr and Muffley driving in the run. So all the action at the bottom of the lineup tonight for FSU. Yeah, a lot of times you highlight that top of the lineup if you look at the damage they can do. But it's been the middle lower half that has just been outstanding. Yeah, and really, it's the consecutive at-bats, the ability to follow up, to move runners, and then to hit with runners in scoring position that has propelled Florida State here this afternoon in game one as well as in game two. Come on, you got to say it. The word you've been trying to get out all night. There we go. <laughs> you didn't Heck pick a dictionary. A uh, if we were playing I Scrabble, think. that's a good word. I was a doctor of letters, by the way. I did not think that was an actual word, but I, it is indeed. I had to open the Google <laughs> machine and prove to her it was. We like successive, maybe. Successive, a bit. I think, might roll off the tongue a little bit. Yeah, consecutiveness is like 
clutchness. Clutchness, yeah. <laughs> Leonard draws the two-out walk. Well, both of these clubs are very good at drawing the base on ball. We have not seen a lot of that here. Clemson, or uh, excuse me, Florida State number one coming in yeah. in the country, right? And was Clemson number three? Yep. Yeah. Amaya Ross will come on to run for Mac Leonard uh, as a pinch runner. She scored in the first game today. Waycaser with a ground out and then a single and a run scored in the fourth. Ross on the run. Wow. Stolen base with ease. She is fast, 13th of the year. That is the fourth of the game, now the 11th of the series, the two games today. Grounder to Logaleo at short, and that'll take care of business in the fifth. Three to one, though, Florida State is still on top. I think it's going to be a wild one. There was chaos last year, mm -hmm. Smitty. Yeah. I think it ensues again this year. Mm. Autumn Belvi, uh, Belvi is the new right fielder. Last year in the NCAA, three unseeded teams made it to the World Series, and Texas was in the final as an unseed the first time ever. Oregon State was one of the last four teams into the field, and they were at the World Series. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of it fell into the lap of the ACC because you had a two-seed Florida State and a three-seed Virginia Tech that were both bounced before Oklahoma City. Duke and Clemson both lost on the road in the Supers last year. Well, and I think it's interesting, too. The NCAA started, what, seeding volleyball, one through 32. So I, I hope that soon we will get that as yes. well, instead of just the top 16 seeds, if we could get the top 32 seeds. Geography still in play. Yep. Uh, I'm hearing, hopefully, maybe next year. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Next year is a rules year. Hopefully a lot will change. I think with the improvements in the pacing of Major League Baseball. I really hope that is going to come down to the college game next year with pitch clocks. So the pitchers, like for example right now, would have to stay, Kat Sandercock would have to stay in the circle. And the batters would yes. also have to keep a foot in the batter's box. So important. That's the international rule yes. that we play with. And the, the games, they, you know, they stay on pace. Some coaches that we've talked to, they want to get rid of the pitching lanes there you see in the pitcher circle. They think the crow hop is out of date. Let's just go totally international, free up the pitchers to do their things. A lot of coaches would like to see less timeouts and conferences with catchers and infielders and pitchers. Keep the game flowing. Get us back closer to a two-hour window as opposed to a three-hour window, which means less softball gets televised. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's significant. Instead of having three games of two hours, you know, for a six-hour window, now you're looking at two games mm -hmm. instead of those three games. So, it, yeah, it makes a big difference. There's less linear windows when the games go longer. A lot of coaches we've talked to excited about the opportunities or the conversations, certainly, at least. I think the safety bag will be a thing next year, the double bag at first base. They had some transportation issues and ordering issues and Supply chain issues, couldn't get them all in place this year. I think it's coming next. Oda grounds it to Keene at first, the foot race. Florida State wins it. One down. This is a tight play. A unique situation where she's coming from behind the bag to the front. And just barely beats it out. Good job by Keene to pick the inner part of the bag. 
Otis. Oh, wow. Clemson's calling for a review here. I'm not sure what they saw for it. looked like it actually came from the dugout. Yeah. It's unfortunate because they had an opportunity to potentially. It was a big deal in the first game. When in they, the first game, they did not review it. They were on the defensive side of it and did not review it. Well, maybe that's why they want to make sure this time, I guess. I don't know. That's Keen is there half a step. Yeah. Yeah, that will stay. It shouldn't take very long. No. I think that's one thing that the SEC network or the SEC does so well is they have a centralized, so they can yes. they say immediately and they go right to the officials. Yeah, I think this is also the next evolution is Correct. Quicker, quicker replay reviews. Correct. And obviously the guys saw what the replay showed. Still out. That'll bring up Allie Micklish. Allie's one for four with a doubleheader today. Allie with a lot of speed. Good job of pulling back. She's going to drop the sneaky bunt down and pulls back. 61 pitches for Sandra Cock, and after what, she was sub-30 the first game, so she's still yeah. probably got a lot of gas in the tank. The question is, will Lonnie Alameda want to give someone else an opportunity in this environment? They only have five complete games all season. All five of them are cats. Yes. <laughs> but they have used a ton of different arms on this staff to effectively get jobs done. But a lot of that, too, is you know, Lonnie likes to make sure she is building and preparing her pitchers. And she talked about it. Last time they were at the Women's College World Series, she didn't, she didn't feel like some of her pitchers were prepared yep. emotionally or mentally enough for that environment. So she's worked very hard at putting this team in uncomfortable positions so that when they do, if they do, get to the Women's College World Series, every one of those pitchers, whoever's number she calls, can go out there and be comfortable in that position. Let's face it, that's a big part of it. Well, and it could be huge. I mean, we we don't see a ton of that in softball. Situational, like lefty-lefty, or analytically, I've got somebody that I can bring in for one or two batters yep. even. It could be something unique. Ground ball to Keene, two down. Got some men's lacrosse coming your way and a top 10 matchup from Dorrance Field down in North Carolina. It's the Tar Heels. And the Wahoos, 6 Eastern Friday on ACC Net. We hope to have more softball for you tomorrow night on ESPN2, set for 7 Eastern, game three of this series. Of course, ACC softball presented by Ally. A lot of the softball around the country gets pushed up a day, so uh, folks can be home for Easter Sunday. Yeah. And then into the home stretch. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, it'll be mayhem. Mayhem on the horizon. <laughs> These two teams played in the ACC championship game last year at Pittsburgh. A win for Florida State. I was just about to say the skies are darkening, Smitty, and then as I check my watch, I realize, well, the sun is kind of sunny. Sunny. That's you, so <laughs> I'm going to hold off on that thought. <laughs> But it does look like the clouds are darker. Yes. 
Just saw, just saw John Rittman looking up at him. Yeah. Looks like a nice sunset off to the right. That's off to the west of us. Oh, Rittman takes one on the ankle. Looks like he's okay. Still spry. Oh, oh I think he jumped into it. <laughs> oh, oh, if off, off one the soul, off to the other, off the soul. His, maybe his <laughs> legs are a little tired. He said he got a good workout in today. He was giving him a hard yes, time. I'm like, Coach, yes. did you bring it? He's like, Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> Scott Whitlock is going to give him a hard time about that. I just know it. That's a good four or five inch vertical right there, <laughs> Coach. <laughs> oh, and a strikeout for Sandra Cock as she pulled the chain on that one. A one, two, three inning. First one of the ball game for the Knowles and a 3-1 lead. Okay. Bringing us double header action today and hopefully Game three tomorrow night. Florida State looking for a series win right here. A two run lead after they won the first game this afternoon, seven love. Some might say by a touchdown, Smitty. Florida State Clemson. Janai Kerr to start things off, six, seven, eight. Kerr's had a good game. Good day, yeah. A couple of ribs. Three hits. Oh, and she may have just added to it. Back it goes. Off the scoreboard. Solo home run, Janai Kerr. Wow, how about Janai Kerr having a series? She gets all into that pitch. Aggressive early in the count. Florida State has been swinging it, and you can see she is just loaded up and clears those hips so that barrel just explodes through the zone. That solo shot, that's her eighth home run of the year. Kerr, three for three now on the day. What a leap for Janai. Of course, she started out her first year, the ACL injury really slowed her down. Last year, a 260 hitter with five home runs. She has blasted past both batting average and home run numbers already this year. And takes a bite out of the scoreboard out and right. Yeah, just a sophomore, super excited to have her back returning from that injury that she had early in her career and you know, just settling in. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of time to really get comfortable. So now Michaela Edenfield 0 for 2. It's drifting into foul territory. And a nice sliding grab made by Maddie Moore. One down. Good job to track that down. Maddie Moore has to go a long way. She's going to slide down, making sure she gets the, the catch. Basket, hand on top, secures it. Bethany Keene looking for the 5-6 hole, and she will leg it out. Infield hit. Keene pitch on the outer half and just pops that into the 5-6 hole. It's going to take Logaleo deep out onto left field. Josie Muffley. Hit batter. And Muffley taking that one. It's in the box. Doesn't have to get out of the way. Is she going to be involved in uh, all the scoring innings without even getting a hit? She had a sacrifice bunt when they scored a run in the third. The sacrifice fly for an RBI in the fourth. 
And now on board again. And she passes the bat to the top of the order. Yeah, and again, it's been the bottom of the order that has just been getting it done. Mudge and Flaherty, a base hit as well, but man, I like to be in the lower half of this line. Oh. <laughs> man, having themselves a double, double dip. Yeah. Oh, they're batting over 400 in this game. They're nine for 22. Three for 10 with runners on, two for eight with runners in scoring position. Mudge, fly ball left, McClash has it. Two down. Another RBI, RBI opportunity for Devin Flaherty. She drove in a run with a base hit in the third. Keen and Muffley aboard here with two outs. One run already in on the Janai Kerr home run. is away, 3-0. Florida State being patient when they need to, but aggressive when they can be. And, you know, being able to balance those two together is so important to working pitchers deep into counts when they're not giving you the pitches you want to dive into. And that is a four-pitch walk to load the bases. For Kaylee Harding. He's 0 for 3 today, so Keen at third, Muffley at second, Flaherty at first. Fourth free pass of the day for Florida State. Three walks, a hit batter. Two of those in this inning. Harding's due, she's 0 for 7 on the day. 3.30 hitter. Trouble if it stays fair and it drifts foul. Well, that was a screamer. Yeah, that was close to being her eighth home run of the year and a granny. Just a little early. Smiles with the souvenir out there. One two pitch. Harding. And right at McLesh out in left. And that'll end the threat. They leave them loaded, but they do get one more in and a three run lead. Clemson, the Tigers trailing the Seminoles four to one as Florida State tries for the sweep of the doubleheader in their very first trip here to Clemson. Hey, everybody, Beth Mullins, Michelle Smith, that's our buddy JD right there. Our entire crew putting in the work today, bringing you both games and hopefully one more tomorrow night. Game three set for 7 Eastern on ESPN2. The weather stays to, what, mm -hmm. is it the north of us? Ket Sandercock, uh, five innings of work, four hits, the one earned run. That is after she had two and a third innings of relief and picked up a save in the opening game. And that was the 100th pitch of the day she has thrown. Yeah, just 71 pitches here in game two of this doubleheader. And you know, she's been in control. She hasn't really gotten a lot of trouble. She's used her defense behind her. She's not a high volume strikeout pitcher, just three on the game. 
Dealing with the top of the order one more time. Clark Moore and then the home run hitter, Valerie Cagle. They are looking for a breakthrough. Held to just two hits in the shutout earlier. Four hits so far for the team with the fourth best batting average in the country coming into this series. Well, they've fouled off a lot of pitches this afternoon. They just haven't been able to barrel them up, so they're off just by a little bit. So they're either thinking or looking for pitches, and you know, it's hard. Sometimes you have to change that strategy, hunt different pitches if you're not getting what you're, you're hopefully looking for. Make some adjustments. Looks like Mackenzie Clark is off the plate now a little bit. She had been a little closer earlier. Can't try to drop one into the zone. Two and two. Mackenzie Clark reminds me of a, a right-handed Michelle Moultrie. Yeah. Who used to play for, for Florida. Just has that walk about her, speed, can hit for power. And after she tried to drop one in, she comes back with the rise for the strikeout. That's number four for Sandra Cock, one down. On the Sandra Cock, a lot of times if you're going to scout her, you're going to say low in the zone, look for that off speed. But she also has a quality rise ball. Look at that pitch. So she'll bait you into looking down and bring that up at your eyes, and it's so easy to elevate. Sandra Cock, just a lot of different tools, attacks every zone. She's been on point, just 75 pitches here. In the bottom of the six. Here's Maddie Moore. Top three in the order have done a better job of getting on base in game two than in game one. Clark Moore and Cagle have been aboard five times, including uh, the Cagle home run. Cat gets the swing and miss, so and two. Slightly elevated changeup called for a strike. Comes right back upstairs, but with the rise ball. One of the things that Lonnie talked to us about this week with her pitching staff you know with all the advancements in technology velocity isn't quite what it used to be in terms of intimidating batters they can catch up to 72 73 and she works a lot with her pitchers on different planes and speed differential yes. being able to throw 70 55 and all points in between keep batters off balance yeah you need velocity separation you need vertical separation that's what fools the hitters, because yeah, the speed nowadays, that, that doesn't mean anything. You, know, you hear a lot of coaches talk about spin speed over pitch speed, and that's that spin speed, or how tight the ball's rotating, that's really gonna add to that movement. And, and then there's just command of your pitch. So is it doing what you want it to do? Is your curveball actually running? Is your screwball actually you know, coming back into the hands of the hitter? Sandra Cock working 0 2. Even that, that's a pitch with a purpose. That's a very good 0 2 pitch, elevated rise ball. it off, fires to first. Good defense from Kaylee to cut that off. It would have been too deep for the shortstop, Muffley, to get the out. And now it's Valerie Cagle. And this is what Cagle did last 
time she saw the ball thrown at her, she takes the Kat Sandercock low inside pitch and drives Ouch. it out and hurts the hand of one of the fans in the outfield. <laughs> 14th home run of the year for Valerie Cagle. That defied the uh, yep. the spray chart. That was in the 23 percentile range. That's right. When it hit Mr. Hand out there. <laughs> Let's see how Sander Cock pitches to her this time. And starts her off with an off speed. Make sure she's not diving into the first pitch she sees. That was her 14th round tripper of the year. Just missed it. Valerie has such a nice swing, so smooth, really can drop that barrel through the zone on something inside. But I think the thing that I love what she does so well, a stay inside the ball. That's why she has all that power that she can hit the opposite field. So she's hard to pitch to. She likes to attack that outside pitch, but can absolutely clobber anything on the inner half. Muffley behind the base at second and not in time. Kegel able to leg it out. That one was slow developing. Oh, that's just great positioning by Josie Muffley. That looks like it's going to be a base hit, and then all of a sudden you look up and you see that Muffley's there, but because Cagle runs so well out of the left side and gets a high hop up the middle, she's going to beat that out for an infield base hit. Cagle's second hit of the ball game, and her third of the series. And now here's Caroline Jacobson. Nine home runs for the Duke transfer, and one swing away from uh, adding a little drama to this one here in the bottom of the sixth. Well, that's, the, that's the one thing that Clemson has struggled on today. In game one, with runners on, they were 0 for 11. And here in game two, with runners on, 0 for 6. 0 for 6, Oof. 0 for 1 risk. And just two for six with two outs. I haven't had a whole lot of chances against Cat no. here in game two. Mm -mm. Jacobson out to Kerr in center, and she'll take care of that. We are headed to the seventh inning. Florida State closing in on the doubleheader sweep. Here's how Florida State got on the board. And a 4-1 lead. Good hustle by Devin Flaherty. And the infield hit to score Katie Dack. Then they added a couple more in the fourth. Janai Kerr, an RBI single, and Muffley with the sacrifice fly. And then Janai, pow, off the scoreboard. And a solo home run. Kegel added a home run for Clemson to make it 4-1. And Reagan Spencer is your new pitcher here in the seventh. Spencer's gonna use her defense behind her as well. She's a lot of pitch to contact. Hammers the lower part of the zone. Boy, this is one of the, the best pitching staffs in all of the NCAA. Number one coming in, but Florida State has done some damage to that. Leonard is one for two. It's four, five, and six in the lineup. Has reached twice and scored once. And a called strike three. Pitch on the inside corner. Leonard looked like she was looking outside, not looking for that inside pitch. Spencer puts up 
Big strikeout here to start the seventh. Allie Waycaser singled back in the fourth. A couple of ground outs around that. at second base, Matty Moore, two down. Matty Moore going a long way, playing up the middle a lot of today. I've seen her run down quite a few balls to the 3-4 hole as well as in the foul territory. So this is off the end of the bat. Looks like it's gonna try and squeak through to right field, but she says, oh no. Nice diving catch. Excellent range. And they are finally able to get Janai Kerr out three for four on the day. Last chance coming up for the Tigers. Down three with three outs to work with. Four to one, Florida State over Clemson. Uh, some young, uh, some young arms out there. Looked like they're on the road to success. Same pitching coach. Yes. Pretty good. Keep, keep slinging it. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Sandercock is going to do just that. She's going for the complete game here. Four to one, Florida State. And she's back out there for the seven, three outs away from a doubleheader sweep. They came to town in second place in the ACC behind Clemson. And they are looking to finish the day in first place, leapfrogging the Tigers with a doubleheader sweep. Game three tomorrow night, seven Eastern on ESPN two. See if the Tigers can have a say about that. Five, six, and seven, Logaleo, Vieira, and Oda do up. They do not have a hit off of Cat tonight. Back to that sign those young ladies were, uh, I mean, that's pretty good if you think about the, the pitchers that have uh, come mm -hmm. out of Rita Lynn Gilman. She's a great pitching coach out of the Virginia area. Came down to some of my holiday camps years ago, and just she's developed some really good pitchers on the East Coast. Yeah, both Cagle and Thompson, Virginians, actually had originally committed to other schools. Millie to JMU, Cagle to Delaware. They would have been playing against each other in that conference, and instead decided that Clemson was the better spot for them, and it has certainly paid off for those two ladies. Mm -hmm. Logaleo lifts one to the left side, and Muffley will take care of it, one down. And that's part of the reason this defense is so good, is that when you have middles that can go that deep into the outfield, it allows Mudge and Kerr and Bellamy to you know, play deep and be able to protect so that nothing's hit over your head, but you can still protect that nothing falls inside. Here's Abby Vieira. This would be quite a feat for Florida State. When you look at some of the best wins in softball around the country this year, on the road, a doubleheader sweep of number four would be right up there close to the top of the list. Especially since they hadn't lost at home all season. And only one loss on the year, that to Tennessee 40 days ago. Jose Chaparro trying to shake that off. That was a direct hit. Right off the top of the shoulder.
appears that Jose will stay behind the plate. If you're looking, by the way, for the Clemson Florida State baseball game, that has started on the app. We will get you there here on ACC Network at the conclusion of this game. Nice round of applause for Jose and a reminder that hopefully we'll all be back here for more softball tomorrow night, weather permitting. Game three of the series on ESPN 2 at 7 Eastern. Primetime softball for you on yeah. the deuce. It's going to be a big game if the score stays the way it is right now. That's a big game for Clemson. Try to salvage a win out of the, yeah. out of the series. Need that top ten win on the resume. Absolutely. All right, uh, the count one and one to Abby Vieira. One and two. Strikeout for Sandra Cock, two down. That's number five tonight for Cat. Sandra Cock has had three versus strikeouts on the rise, one on the changeup, this one on the drop ball coming down underneath the hands. Just a lot of late sharp movement. Sandra Cock has just looked very strong today, really good spin speed. So she's had that good movement. Final chance now, it's Ariel Oda. Couple of ground outs to the right side. Cat Sandercock trying to secure career win number 92 to inch closer to that century mark. That would uh, tie her, by the way, for fourth all time with Jessica Burroughs on the wins list. And the pitching staff for Florida State has been fabulous. Clemson came into this hitting 357. That was fourth best in the country. So far in the double header, they are hitting 143 and have been held to one run on seven hits. That's money. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and you think this is a Clemson lineup that is long. I mean, every hitter over 300. The batter had a home run. Good backhand from Keene, and that'll do it. Florida State making a statement. A doubleheader road sweep at fourth-ranked Clemson for the Seminoles to take over first place in the ACC. Every facet of the game, just outstanding. They're pitching strong, defense behind them, and the offense, you know, putting the pressure on, putting a lot of runs up on the board. They outscore the Tigers today 11-1. to 7-0 Seven in game one, and now 4-2 in, uh, in the nightcap. Coming up, same two sides, college baseball, Clemson and Florida State. For Michelle Smith, I'm Beth Moans, our entire crew. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow night, 7 Eastern, ESPN 2.